Hello and welcome to um, one of my first ever themed reading vlogs. Um, I don't think I've ever done one of these before. Um, well no, I, I know I haven't. I did a, a vlog for the Reading Rush, which were my first videos that I uploaded to YouTube, um, but I've never done a kind of themed reading vlog, which is very exciting um, because I love watching them. So inspired by Grace from GK Reads, who I feel like I mention in literally every single video, but I love her so it's fine, she's great. Um, yes, inspired by Grace, I am going to be reading books inspired by um, my star sign. I am a Pisces, um, my birthday is coming up and I thought given that it is now Pisces season, um, I can read books that are recommended for Pisces. So I went on the internet, did a little troll, um, and I managed to find four books that I already have that are recommended for Pisces. Um, I found them via Lit Hub, which who do um, a great um, kind of astrology book club every month. They recommend um, a different book for each star sign, which is really cool. Um, so I went through all of their different posts, found four that um, I already have and I want to read, which is great because it means I don't have to buy any books, <laughs> which is, as we know, something that I'm not, I don't want to do this year. Um, but also I found a whole load of other books that sound amazing that I'm going to keep um, on my TBR for another time. Although one of the books that um, I found that I don't already have, um, the ebook is available on script, so I will be reading that as well. So most of the books that seem to be recommended for Pisces um, are kind of experimental, slightly dreamy, creative um, and emotional books, which is great. Um, and the first of them that I found that I already have is Earthlings by Sayaka Murata and I am so excited about this book, oh my god. Um, yes, I loved Convenience Store Woman um, when I read it last year and I am so excited for this. It's meant to be really weird, freaky, all the scary shit, I don't know, but I'm very excited about it so I will be reading this. I will also be reading um, In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. Um, I also read um, her body and other parties last year in December and even though I didn't love it I really enjoyed um, the writing um, and I think that um, I will enjoy this more because this is a memoir told in a really kind of um, experimental way about um, some time spent in a abusive relationship so I'm hoping that this will be more my kind of thing also literally everything I've heard about this has been incredible so I'm very excited to read this and I'm so excited I'm I'm very happy that it turned up on lots of these recommended lists because it's a book I want to read anyway. There are two books that um, I have but they're not with me here um, that I'm gonna read. I've messaged my mum and been like yo mum send me these books. Um, firstly is Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. Um, I don't really know what this is about I'm assuming it's a kind of um, retelling of Frankenstein but I think it's kind of like slightly sci-fi, kind of fucking with gender, all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm very excited about that. About that. Also there's Lanny by Max Porter, um, which is, I think it's my mum's copy, but she's gonna send it to me because she's nice. Um, and yes, I read Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Max Porter a few years ago, loved it. Those four are books that I was very excited about anyway. <laughs> and essentially this video is an excuse to read them, um, which is always, you know, welcome. Um, and it's kind of made me excited about reading things, like new things, because I've been in, in a little bit of a slump in the last couple of weeks, last month-ish, um, and not very excited about picking things up. So hopefully this will be a kind of like motivation thing. That being said, I don't know when I'm gonna start these books because I'm already in the middle of like three, including Nightingale Point by Luan Goldie, which I'm really enjoying so far. The other one that I found on my um, travels through Lit Hub um, and the rest of the internet, but all of these came from Lit Hub, um, that I haven't got, but sounds amazing, that I found on Scribd is called Wild Swims um, by Dorthan Norse. Um, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce that, but it's translated. It's a collection of short stories. Um, it sounded amazing. Obviously, I will update you when I actually start reading some books. Who knows when that will be? Um, we shall see. Good morning. It is um, Monday the 1st of March, so it's been a little while since I decided to do this and since I updated you. 
um, because <laughs> it's been a busy week. I finished um, Nightingale Point by Luan Goldie on Saturday um, and I loved it. I loved it. But that means I can now move on to um, my Pisces books. Um, so I started Frankenstein last night and I read the first little section which is um, narrated from Mary Shelley's point of view and I love it. <laughs> I love it so much so far. Um, I'm a little bit obsessed so yeah I'm really excited to carry on with this. Um, I also I tried last week reading um, Wild Swims by Dorothy Norse um, and I read the first three stories and I'm not a massive fan I'll be honest um I just wasn't getting on with them um so I think I'm gonna DNF that and instead I am thinking um if I get the chance I might read um Bluettes by Maggie Nelson because um I last night I watched a video from um CJ Reads and she recommended that um as a kind of Pisces book and I'm gonna carry on with Jeanette Winterson because I love it. I love it so far. Um, so yeah, I will update you when I have more to say about it. I also started yesterday reading The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky, which is a fucking beast. He's huge. He's almost 900, no, it's over 900 pages long. And the writing is absolutely tiny. Um, so yeah, I'm reading this for uni. <laughs> um, I'm reading this for uni and um, luckily we're reading it in stages, so we're reading it, like, for the rest of the term. So I don't know how much, um, how many of these books that I've chosen for Pisces season I'm going to get through, especially given that I also have three assignments due, um, in about two weeks' time. So, good afternoon. I am aware that the sun is a bit wild right now, but it's fine. Um, so it is... Tuesday the 9th of March which means I haven't spoken to you for um over a week <laughs> because I have been busy and um also struggling a little bit with the old brain box however I did finish Frankenstein yesterday last night um and I have thoughts that are complicated so for the most part I enjoyed this book. Um, it's split between two timelines, um, so between um, Mary Shelley writing and kind of, well, coming up with the idea for Frankenstein um, and writing the book um, in the early 19th century, um, and then a modern day timeline um, which focuses on um, a main character um, who is trans non-binary um, called Rye, and they are falling for and kind of getting to know this scientist called um Victor who is basically trying to figure out um the sort of secret to life I guess and whether like robotics can help people um live longer lives um and basically believes that um kind of uploading people's consciousness to a computer is the way for humans to advance and progress. The sections about Mary Shelley and narrated by Mary Shelley are so beautifully written, um, so emotional as well as philosophical, um, and the characterization of all these people, all the characters, obviously, is excellent, um, especially given that they're all famous people, they don't feel flat at all, they don't feel like caricatures, and they don't feel romanticised, they feel like real people. The way that the ideas um, were kind of planted um, and developed and you could see them throughout the rest of this book but also how they'd kind of come from um, Frankenstein and how you got to see Mary Shelley's um, creative development um, through her kind of discussions and also through the sort of like the ideas and um, feelings that she was having in her her life at least her life in this book that was all fascinating and I loved that those bits so much the modern day parts weren't quite as enjoyable. Um, I found the um, characters quite a lot more flat, but the ideas were still really interesting. Um, and I really loved how parallels were being drawn kind of across the timelines and from science 
um, two relationships. Um, all that was really well done. However, there is a massive but to all of this, which is the way Jeanette Winterson writes the trans experience. When I was actually reading the book, I felt quite conflicted about it, um, mostly because I could, I, it kind of felt uncomfortable to me, but um, Rye experiences lots of transphobia um, from the other characters, but it's all kind of, it's, it's not like, it's transphobia that isn't acknowledged as such. For example, the relationship between Victor and Rai is often really difficult to read about because um, Victor fetishizes um, Rai and their body as some kind of oddity. Um, and that's really nasty, but also Rai challenges them on it and says, you know, you are um, kind of, you're only interested in me because of the kind of, you know, your ideas about, your scientific ideas about the body um, interest you and I'm kind of linked to that. But yeah, this, this aspect is just not discussed fully enough. I think this was my main problem with this, the entire thing, is just that obviously it's fine writing a book about a trans character who experiences transphobia, but what it's not okay to do is write a book where that transphobia and the character's trans identity is everything we learn about the character. Like, that's all the characterization we get. Like, that's not okay. It felt like Rai was just there as a person who Victor could tell all his clever ideas to um, and would serve as a kind of jumping off point for a discussion about bodies and what they mean to people in the modern world. So ultimately, Rai as a character was serving um, Victor and Jeanette Winterson um, their discussion without having any personality or development outside of being trans and suffering for that. And also, on top of that, their trauma, what they experience, is never properly discussed. Like, it's just pushed aside so we can talk more about sciencey stuff. There are other things I could get into, um, but I could be sitting here for hours and essentially what I want to say is just, this is very clearly not a book for trans people. It is a cis perspective on what it is to be trans and frankly we don't need that anymore like that's we're done with that um and I'm kind of ashamed of myself for reading this expecting it to be a you know a book just about a character who is trans and not expecting some kind of you know this this dodginess if you want to read a book with trans representation don't read this um, because it's not a trans story. It's a sci-fi story um, and a really great historical fiction story um, about Mary Shelley, um, but it uses trans identities um, in a really insensitive way. And I'm disappointed. I expected better from this, um, especially, you know, as I was reading it because I was thinking, you know, this writing, a lot of it is really beautiful. Um, lots of the discussions around trans identities were was kind of borderline and I was thinking okay yeah this is interesting but ultimately as a book about a trans main character it's not the one. It, it's taken me a while to kind of collect all my thoughts on this book because like I said when I was reading it I was enjoying it um, but the more I think about it now it's finished um, the more I am annoyed at it and I don't want to recommend it. Anyway, now I've finished that, it means I can move on to Earthlings by Sayaka Murata, which I am very excited for. I mean, I'm excited for all these books, but yeah, um, I haven't started this yet, but I will start it later today. To be clear, I am still kind of conflicted about Frankenstein. Um, I don't want to be like, don't read it, it's a terrible book. Jeanette Winterson is horrible and transphobic because I don't think it is necessarily a terrible bad transphobic book and I don't think she was I mean I don't know I don't know but it's 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 complicated hey it's been another you know few days since I last updated you um <laughs> but I've been incredibly busy with assignments and uni stuff and all kinds of things that are happening um but just now, about 10 minutes ago, I finished Earthlings. 
by Sayaka Murata and I'm scarred. Um, I think I'll need a little bit more time to process this and then talk about it properly but for now um, do not go into this like lightly. It's primarily about trauma and not um, being able to kind of fit into a mould um, and it gets incredibly dark and incredibly disturbing um, and hard to read but it's also really good it's really well done it's about a um at first a young girl and then you follow her um as, in, as she grows into her adult life as well um who is she feels kind of out of place in her family like she doesn't belong um and she feels very much like she is not a kind of um a human basically um and that she she sees everything through what she calls like the alien eye um where she can see humanity from an outside perspective um and yeah she suffers some horrible things as a child and then it kind of looks at how this sort of alienation literally that she feels um kind of manifests in her adult life um and it's utterly bonkers and brilliant I think um yeah I'm gonna need a little bit of time to process this and figure out what I think but it's really good Christ I need therapy good morning it is Sunday the 21st of March um which means that Pisces season is officially over RIP I still haven't finished reading in the dream house so I'm gonna carry on with the vlog um I haven't been very good at vlogging <laughs> um, because I know I keep saying this but I have been very busy over the last few weeks and um, I still just have a lot of uni work going all the time it's kind of endless I'm really really loving this like so much I knew I would I love how she's not just telling the story of her relationship she's also um, like exploring how she's looked at it and how she's seen it through her life and kind of exploring the story behind the story and like how she's telling the story if that makes sense um yeah I love it I love it so much the writing is absolutely stunning it's it's brilliant um so I'm really excited to keep reading this and finish it fairly soon um and yeah that'll be the end of this Pisces vlog because God knows it's been going on long enough already. I've just been editing this vlog and um, I realised that because I haven't been doing anything I have no footage apart from talking about books so um, because all I've been doing is university work I thought I'll set up a time lapse so <laughs> here you go. Um, also I don't normally work here but the plants look pretty so we're gonna work on the floor just for you just for the pretty camera angle. Good morning. Um, I'm very excited <laughs> because um, I was just in a seminar and about halfway through I got a knock on the door and they've arrived! So I won um, Simon Savage's giveaway on his YouTube channel for um, the entire Women's Prize long list. <laughs> and they've arrived just now! And I'm gonna open it. Oh my god, I'm so excited. So here it is. <laughs> I haven't read any of these yet. Um, I have the vanishing half already, but none of the others. Um, oh my god. <laughs> ah! So um, here they are. Oh my god, this is so exciting. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, they're all so pretty. Right, I'm just gonna go through them really quickly. Um, so we have Consent by Annabelle Lyon, 
um, which I think I've vaguely heard of before um, this, but I really don't know much about this, so very exciting. Then we've got one that I'm most excited for, Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Um, I can't wait to read this. I'm so excited. I've had so many amazing things. Oh my god. <laughs> got Luster by Raven Lalali. Also one I wanted to read before the long list was announced. Um, oh my god. Also, I adore this cover. It's beautiful. Then we have Because of You by Dawn French. This is one that I um, would never have thought to read before the women's song list was announced, so this is very exciting. Um, also, I have no idea what it was about, but I'm really hoping that it will be kind of light and funny, because I don't read much of that, um, and I need it in my life right now. So, yee! Then we have How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones. Um, again, basically know nothing about this. Very excited. The only one that I already have, The Vanishing House by Britt Bennett. Britt Bennett, so I'll probably give this away to a friend. No one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood. Um, one that I didn't think I had any interest in, but um, I've seen lots of people talking about it recently and it seems to be kind of like funny satire about online stuff. So I'm really excited about this. Also, I adore this cover. It's gorgeous. This is so exciting. Oh my God. This is Transcendent Kingdom by uh, Jassy. Um, I already have um, a NetGalley arc of this um, online, but I have a physical copy. <laughs> this is another one that I'm probably not gonna read um, because I haven't read any of the other seasonal quartets, but I know my mum really loves Ali Smith and um, has read most of the others. I think this is the only one that she doesn't have, so I'll give this to my mum. Then there's Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. That is what it called. it's called, right? Yes. Um, I don't know anything about this. Um, I don't think. I'm excited. Ah! <laughs> Can you tell I'm excited? And there's The Golden Rule by Amanda Craig. Um, this is another one that I am not going to read because Amanda Craig supports um, J.K. Rowling and I'm not about that. Um, I have complex feelings about her being long-listed for the Women's Prize. Um, anyway, um, especially given that um, last year the Women's Prize, the Women's Prize treated um, a Quakey and Mezzi really badly. They've made a step forward by um, nominating Tori Peters with three D transition baby, but this is just another step back. So um, yeah, I'm not gonna be reading this one. And I'm disappointed that it's on the list, but I still love the prize. I think that they're moving in the right kind of direction. Um, and I'm just hoping that, you know, I'm gonna keep supporting them as as long as they continue to improve and have less of that, please. Anyway, another one that I'm very excited about and I was to read anyway is Pronazi by Susanna Clark. I'm so excited! <laughs> In my anti-TBR tag I said that I would not um, read any more Claire Fuller because I've read two of her books and um, wasn't blown away by either of them. <laughs> but I'm gonna have to make an exception for this one, partly because it sounds really cool and also because I now have it. And look at that cover! Oh my god! I'm obsessed! Then there is um, Burnt Sugar by Abney Doshi. Again, very excited about this one. Um, I've heard lots of good things recently, um, even if I wasn't like totally sold originally. My hair looks absolutely mental right now. We're gonna ignore it, don't worry about it. Then there is Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. I'm excited! I don't know what to say! This, it is exciting times. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Nothing But Blue Sky by Kathleen McMahon. I think this is the one that I know literally nothing about. I'm not gonna hold up all these books because it's a massive pile and I think my arms would break, but I am so excited to read all of these. Um, yeah, my no buy in the last couple of weeks has been really gone out of the window. I mean, I did not, didn't buy these obviously, but it's just made my TBR go free and then obviously with like my birthday getting some presents and then I've also bought a couple of things secondhand recently over the last couple of weeks so all the good work that I've been doing not buying books <laughs> for the first couple of months of this year has just gone out the window but it's okay because I'm happy 
um, and that's all that matters. Thank you so much, Simon and the Women's Prize, for sending me these. Hello, it is um, Friday the 26th of March and I finished in the dream house last night um, and I loved it. What I love most about it was um, that she tells the story in different ways because you can tell that she's trying to figure out like how best to tell it um, and how best to make sense of it kind of using like different traditions and different sort of um, theoretical like um, frameworks and kind of applying them to her experiences and trying to make sense of it. Yeah, I cannot fault this. I gave it five stars. It's brilliant. Um, I knew I'd love it and I did. So I'm very happy. This was a very positive end to this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will hopefully be back soon um, with new stuff, um, but who knows? I can't promise anything. Um, anyway, I will see you soon.